I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I thought this was going to be a quick six minute video. I show the claim, I show the reality, I show the delta, I show where it comes from and just demonstrate how ludicrous it is and six minutes finished. Very informative, instructive video. But then I start digging and I find more and I think this is important and I want to show this that I haven't missed these things, but I have looked at them and then I get these long monsters. I'm so sorry, but I do hope that they are informative anyway. And again, I'm dedicating this video to Malala, who shows us that education is so desperately needed to overcome the superstitious, nonsensical thinking that we experience in some areas. Because humans, I mean, we've always had this affinity for the occult. And since a modern ape, such as the Homo sapiens, even in 2013, still has these old parts of the brain functioning, there are many thoughts and actions governed by instinctive patterns. Hence the outpour of oxytocin, along with a warm, fuzzy feeling when surrounded by like-minded people, extending hugs, recognition and feeling love, regardless whether by a relative or an imaginary being. So this imaginary being can have as many definitions as there are humans on this planet. There's no universal understanding of the attributes of this being. There's a common denominator, which is that, well, a being of this type should be called a god. This God and its understanding is then split up between different groups of believers who have agreed on a particular subset of attributes for this God, which they triumphantly declare as the only true definition. Since they all do that, it is now up to the individual what attributes this being has. Let's look at one of these groups where a socio-political system has emerged as a worldview based on a set of attributes which are collectively known as Islam. And the God in this context and religious environment is not supposed to be humanized and thus followers of this worldview have not assigned a name. It is simply God. There are many different types of followers within this context, all with their different rituals and interpretations for this one God, the largest group being people who call themselves Muslims. The dilemma is that for some unknown reason, the followers of this being need a book to be able to believe in their God. Now this book, the Quran, is quite an old book, compiled over a thousand years ago. It consists of stories, commands, descriptions and threats. It tells the reader about a being which is a type of a god. This god is not real in the sense that it exists within the confines of our universe and can't be adequately described or perceived by means available to humans. Now there are stories in the Quran which tell of the huge powers of this being which is said to have created our entire universe without explaining why, how, or by what means. Well, creating a universe, I mean, you just create some matter and then you wait for gravity to do its thing, so it doesn't look all that, that complicated. But uh, anyway, the same goes for every living thing that this being must have created, because, well, it's not actually plausible and does not really fit in with our perception and knowledge of reality. Rational thinkers have rejected the claims made in the book called the Quran. Since these followers have no rational or fact-based reason to believe what they believe, they try from time to time to inject an aspect of reality into this occult and esoteric book. To justify their rituals and rejection of reality, these deceiving scumbags try and convince others that there are elements of knowledge which have been described and verified via today's scientific evidence, hidden away in the vague and obscure passages of this old book. Because this fails miserably as soon as you go and look at it, they then try and convince others that ignoring the commands will lead to huge amounts of punishment as a consequence. If all of that fails, some Muslims, followers, believers or submitters attempt to impress others by claiming to have unearthed some mathematical patterns, which are so wondrous that the author of this book and, by deduction, the entire worldview must surely be superhuman and thus a god dutifully following the Barnum effect. A man who had exactly this in mind was Rashad Khalifa, born into a Sufi household in 1935 in Egypt, who declared in 1974 that he had in fact unearthed by divine and spiritual revelation a mathematical miracle. He claimed that the Quran was written around a mathematical structure, the base of which was 19. While he was at it, not only the book, but the entire universe was based on well, and designed around this number 19. 
Well, it's strange that the, the Baha'i calendar is composed of 19 months, each with 19 days, but they're not considered Muslims. Like, well, we, we know today that Earth was designed to rotate once around its axis every 19 hours and the moon would rotate, well, around Earth 19 times in one solar year in our solar system with 19 planets and a sun 19 times as large as Earth. In my past videos, I've already mentioned this miracle claim and it has missed it as just another hoax and artificial scrambling for artificial science. I completely dismissed it for the dishonest tactic it is. Now, if Muslims require confirmation by non-believers and require constant admiration and active agreement from the believers, I see this as an indication of inherent weakness and that Muslims themselves are not really convinced of the divine origins of this book. And this is further demonstrated by the need for external sources and the idol figure of Muhammad, who is believed by some Muslims to be the father figure worth following and copying even today. On top of that, there have been numerous attempts at placing scientists and scientific miracles claims into a position of supporting the Quran and Islam. All this has a long history. And in the history of numerology, I found Pythagoras saying that such magic da, 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 that all things are da, 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 da. this number is the mediator between the divine and the earthly. So in many essays, speeches and videos, the fallacious and highly dishonest claims for scientific miracles in the Quran have been thoroughly refuted. The mathematical and numerical claims were dismissed as being fallacious and horribly wrong. Anyone can make any number of claims surrounding an event using a date, which can be written like a large number, which can be manipulated in various ways. I mean, even short numbers can be manipulated, such as what happened after the Twin Towers attack in, in New York. So the date of the attack, which was 9-11, 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. September 11th is the 254th day of the year, 2 plus 5 plus 4 equals 11. After September 11th, there are only 111 days left to the end of the year. The first plane to hit the towers was Flight 11. American Airlines or AA, a first letter, so again we have 1111. State of New York, the 11th state to add it to the Union. New York City, 11 letters. <laughs> this shows that simply looking for things resulting in a specific number are pretty easy to find. And Applying different methodologies and varied ways of manipulating data falsifies it further. So what I will show is that the 19 miracle fails at any amount of levels. In itself, it is not defined and does not follow a defined pattern or recurrence. It only works by retrofitting an eye. You take a text and try to squeeze a pattern onto it, knowing as apophenia, or as Michael Shermer has coined it, patternicity. In a previous video, I have looked into the version seeking out visible patterns called pareidolia. I will further show how text is manipulated to make the claim fit and how selective cherry picking is merely creating an effect, a hollow and temporary feeling of amazement where skeptic and rational analysis quickly reveals the trickery and dishonest manipulations. However, the default and much easier position Oh, this comes back to the old human parts, um, the, 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 the parts of the human brain, is to simply accept these claims as they don't initially sound threatening. Proving, checking or verifying does require work and intellectual activity, so it's more complicated. Now, a video is surfaced made by a Turkish apologist who went around and gathered names. Names, well, a lot of atheists, much like Ben Stein in his, in his piece of trash and lies called Expelled. This Turkish guy, Edip Yüksel, accumulated bits of video with non-believers to gain credibility for his bunch of concocted nonsense, editing it to make it look as though someone was paying even superficial attention to his endless rambling once they got the gist of what he was saying. Yüksel is an apologist who believes in the inerrancy of the Quran and rejects texts outside of the Quran. Because this single book becomes so important to him, he tries to revive the old miracle claim using numerology and pattern seeking mechanisms around this 19. Yüksel seems to see atheists as the greatest threat to Islam and the credibility of the Quran. I would imagine that a 
believer believes what she or he believes because of the positive experience and not in spite of the disbelief of others. If I know that horoscopes are crock, I either ignore them or, if I need to know what a horoscope apparently says about me, I will blank out the reality stuff and pretend that there is some validity and value in this horoscope. Why would I go and confront skeptics with this, knowing full well that I will only be laughed at? This does not deter our guy Yuxel from publishing selected debates, which he had with, with Daniel Lomax and some other critics of The Mighty Miracle and called it a book. Now he is following this up with a video utilizing other critics, trying to make them look foolish and thereby making them what he calls running like zebras and insinuating this somehow increases the credibility of the Quran and thereby Islam. Is this what he calls preliminary video? Um, I mean, he shows exactly what kind of level of juvenile thought processes we are dealing with. Of Masjid Tucson is 57.19, Arizona is 8, 57 is Tucson, and 19 is the neighborhood where Masjid Tucson is. The, the, the place where a mosque used to be has a zip code, an identifier tag which is made by humans. And this is 85719. This means that a person who is obsessed with the number 19 finds the number 19 on the highway he is using and the last digits of a zip code. Wow. Do all other highways in the world all end with a 19? No. Do all zip codes where there is or even used to be a mosque end with a 19? No. Is the rest of the zip code, the 857, of any use? No. You need to somehow strip the 8 and you are, lo and behold, left with a 57, which is indeed divisible by 19. A miracle! It's like, you know, it's, it's like I'm interested in a car I've not paid much attention to in the past and suddenly when I'm interested, I see it all the time. Does that represent a miracle? No, it's just a pattern. Is this any confirmation for the divine origins of the Quran? Well, let's take a look, shall we? What is strange is that Islam does not always base its teachings and understandings of their God's wishes only on the Quran, but some sayings and actions of a human, a messenger called Muhammad, who is often attributed the title Prophet. The things he said or did were not recorded during his lifetime, but two, three hundred years later. As a result, many Muslims today reject these sayings, especially when considering that they make Islam a barbaric, irrational and inhumane worldview. But they can't abandon the occult and mysticism altogether and somehow require confirmation beyond their blind faith. Now that's where we enter Rashad Khalifa and his so-called 19 miracle which is claimed to give the Quran the physical proof beyond doubt which it must have been missing all these years, propagated today by this Edip Yuxel. Do these mathematical miracles provide any credibility and is this number 19 a miracle at all? Well. Proponents of this claim define the very discovery of this number-based system a mathematical miracle. However, looking at their rationale and how they arrive at this miracle very quickly reveals that this method is just another hoax and the intentional deception of gullible Muslims who have not had exposure to critical thinking. But here's, here's a quick example. Rashad Khalifa, who was a Quranist or submitter, came up with this mathematical miracle claim in 1974. Now this is how believers in the 90 miracle managed to milk this date. So the makers of this number, da, 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 it was murder. isn't that impressive? Wow. But I'm sorry for being skeptical. Why wasn't the miracle discovered or if this is really all controlled by a God revealed only 13 years later in the year 1406 after Hijra or 1387 after Hijra, only six years earlier. Both are immediately divisible by 19. But Muslims who believe this miracle need to make mathematical adjustments to make the mathematical miracle work. Is 1974 CE this time divisible by 19? No. So that also doesn't work. No, we have to rely on a fabrication. How do you get from 1393 to the desired 1406? By simply stating that the Quran was revealed 13 years earlier and use that as an adjustment factor and add 13. Is that a constant adjustment factor? No, just here and once. And was the Quran really revealed 13 years before Hijra? No, 
or well or to be more precise nobody knows when where for how long or by whom the quran was written there are stories myths and legends that the very first time the first sentence of something which would later become the quran was revealed was in 1610 sorry in 610 or thereabouts is there any historical evidence for this no of course not so coming back to Rasha al Khalifa, we acknowledge he made many claims. He created his own translation of the Quran, which is a mix between what the previous translators already did and what he added as wishful thinking, such as his own name. Later, it seems he became increasingly deluded, calling the Quran corrupt when it did not conform with his 90 miracle claim and he could not find adjustments to make it fit. Much like firing a random shot at a wall and afterwards painting a target around the bullet hole. He finally declared himself a messenger of Allah and also declared his version of the translated Quran authorized by none other than Allah himself. His delusions of grandeur led to extravagancies where his interpretation of reality put him on a collision course with man-made law, resulting in a trial where he admitted having fondled the breasts of an underage girl. His dogma as a borderline theologian led to an increasing rejection and finally hatred by other Muslims and culminated in a fatwa and his subsequent killing in a mosque in the US. But hang on, can't faithful Muslim followers somehow capitalize from his death? Can't you somehow convert the death into a miraculous sign? Well, it turns out it no problem at all. You just take the date of his death, which is 1409 after Hijra, convert it to the date standard introduced by the Catholic Pope Gregory the 13th, which is then January 31st, 19. Now, hang on, hang on. It's, that's not, it's not that easy. You need to go a little bit further. Now you convert that from the US format to the European day, day, month, month, year, 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 year format, simply remove the separated dots and divide the resultant number by 19. Now, you need to go and take some knowledgeable Hindus, devise a system which converts letters into numbers, convert and adapt this for Arabic, which is shown in this table of geometrical values, and manipulate that to get a value of 1213 no, sorry, 1230 for the name of Rashad Khalifa, which only requires some minor manual adjustments to correct for intrinsic errors. So this description is, you take the name Rashad Khalifa, which in Arabic is R, Sh, A, D, and so on. And you take the R, which is the 200. You take the Sh for Rashad is 300. You take the A, which is a one, and then the D, which is a four. And you add that up and you get 505. And you do the same for the last name, which gives you 725. So if you add the two, it's 1230, according to the table humans made, which was not provided by any God. But hang on, wait, <laughs> why is the last letter of Khalifa an H? Uh, well, it turns out the explanation is amazingly simple. Khalifa was a native Arabic speaker from Egypt with heavy Arabic and religious knowledge. <laughs> He did not know anything about the great mathematical. He genuinely calculated his own geometrical value as 1230, and that was genuinely confirmed as correct by other native Arabic speakers studying with him as well. He had a PhD in biochemistry and an Egyptian. No, he had a PhD in biochemistry and an Egyptian calculating the geometrical value of his own name was no less than a no brainer. <laughs> you can't beat these logics. You gotta hand it to them. I mean, their IQs must be well into the double digits. Uh, anyway, let's continue our miracle exploration. What we need to do now is apply this geometrically derived 1230 to the values we've left from, from the above calculation, which we divided the total by 19. So now we need to divide this by the value we established for the name, the 1230, and that leaves you with the remainder. This 1327 turns out not to be divisible by 19 and has nothing special about it. But if you search long enough, you will turn up something. And in this case, it turns out to be a prime number. And you triumphantly declare another miracle. And this is the entire number as an equation. Now, I'm sure if I were a god, I'd come up with something a lot more impressive. 
And as it stands, there are humans I share my genome with who will believe all of this is a sign from a supernatural entity. So why would a God present me with stuff I consider hogwash? Why all these undefined and arbitrarily combined elements? I am sure that if a God were omniscient, it would know what I would consider a sign. And if it were omnipotent, it would be able to provide what I require. And if it were all merciful, it would feel compelled to deliver the right stuff for me. But this, come on. I mean, what any rational mind would consider to be a total lack of definitions and the constant need for brain acrobatics does somehow not deter our Turkish, Kurdish, American apologist Edeb Yüksel from propagating the miracle claim further and deeper. He claims he investigated, studied and researched this miracle claim and can therefore further substantiate it. So what we have is another claim which is similar to the inimitability claim. The format of a book verifies its divine origin. Can this be true? Is human creativity equivalent to divine authorship? No, of course not. How can style verify contents? If we look at the basis for all this counting and allocating numbers to letters and words, we immediately see that this is virtually impossible with the Quran as Hafs and Wash have different lettering systems while maintaining the contents, the meaning. Khalifa arbitrarily decided to take one version of the Quran, modify the contents by deleting some sentences and changing others and then started counting. But as anyone who has seen my textual criticism videos will know, the Quran was originally written in one constant flow. Humans, decades and centuries later, divided the text into words and sentences and applied diacritical marks to give it the meaning we know today. But now the methodology, it, it, it varied and we know of the, the, the Kufa, the Basra, Shami, Makkah, Medina systems of division. Nobody really knows when the sentences and chapters were set into the order we know today and by whom, where this task is purported to have been done by Khalif Uthman. Well, here's the first chapter of the Quran in a simulated Quranic format. So first we need to add the vowels and then we need to add the diacritical markings and finally we bring it into the shape and form we are familiar with. So when, when we've modified everything, let's, let's now look at the methodology of the 19 miracle claim. You get counts which claim the occurrence of a particular letter or word in the Quran or the geometrical value of a word. So how does this counting of the value of a word work? We've seen the example of the name Rashid Khalifa. Let's apply the same thing to the word Wahid, which is spelled W-A-H-D in, in Arabic. So we see the W is the six, the A is the one, the H is the eight and the four. So we get 19. But if we look at the Quran, the, well, the first known Quran, it does not write this with an Alif. This was added later. So the number for the Alif in the actual old Quran, the one falls away and we get the number count 18, not 19. Oops. Unless, of course, we have different versions for the Quran, which contain different letters and words. Can't have it both ways, can you? But if we look at the counting system applied by the 19 miracle, it becomes obvious that it is not straightforward at all. Looking at the occurrence, we see that some words are counted according to spelling, some according to meaning and some according to grammatical derivative. Anything to make it fit. Edi Buxel spends considerable time on this and always declares that the 19 miracle is a legitimate and authentic claim which actually provides a structure to the Quran. Well, if this is true, what about the competition? Will a Muslim acknowledge the veracity of the Bible after reading the following mathematical miracle claim? where Psalm 118 is the middle chapter and one before is the shortest, 119 is the longest, it total has 594, blah, 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 blah. And Psalm is the verse eight is the middle verse of the entire Bible. So you can see you can construct all sorts of things around this as well. Will Muslims accept now the veracity of this mathematical miracle claim? Will they accept that the Bible is inerrant and true? Uh, somehow I doubt it. But for the Quran, it works. And watching the Yuxel video running like zebras, I noticed how a repetitive pattern is constructed, showing Islam is the victim, trying its best to establish itself as a credible and cooperative worldview, yet off camera using vocabulary like penetrating, infiltrating, and 
other really nasty terms. Yuxel seems to enjoy piggybacking into the offices of people. He just hangs onto the coattails of a film crew interviewing Michael Shermer and then just hangs around when the interview itself is over. He says a total like nonsensical stuff like I wrote a thesis on his, well, they're talking about Carl Sagan, so on his work. Um not not on his work um, but basically uh, not 19. on his work, basically on nineteen. Uh, uh, it's a Okay, so I'm gonna say what he then um, talks endlessly at Sherba, who's totally bewildered and eventually has enough uh, of this, and asks Zuxel what he wants, what this is about, and eventually throws him out, telling him he needs to go back to work. But Yuxel is not impressed at all and simply carries on talking until he's finally then stopped and asked to leave. In the video, Yuxel simply lies, saying Sherma invited them to the offices. He did not. In fact, Shermer was so infuriated that he forbade the usage of the section of the video, which um, uh, later on, on unilaterally is ignored on moral grounds by Yuxo, not, not by Shermer. And this is the interview request, and there is no mention of anything like 19, Islam, the Quran, or the name Yuxo. In what Yuxo terms, an interview, which means he talks incessantly, the other person <laughs> sits around board stiff and gets to eject a word and just occasionally. And later with atheist org Dave Silverman, Yuxel talks about the 19 miracle claim and his chat with Michael Shermer and he claims there was a bit of a discussion. There was not. He stated Shermer said that, I mean Shermer looks like an idiot, which he did not say, and then confesses his blatant lying tactics by admitting that he promised not to publish any of the material with him, which he later did use. He does not care one bit that he is infringing on the legal rights of others. Anything to collect names and get his silly doctrine in there. Yet in the video he calls himself a scientist and seems to see himself as some sort of an intellectual academic. Haven't I heard all this before? And, and then he argues for a superstitious belief of a 7th century desert nomad and camel herder. Like I said, deluded. How far deluded? Well, he claims, for example, he had a discussion with Carl Sagan. This entire discussion consists of Yuxel writing pages and pages of stuff to Sagan, and he did finally receive a note telling him his claims were nonsense. Yuxel is not deterred, however, and even writes the most fantastic sentence to Sagan. We may end up co-authoring a book together. That is how far gone our Mr. Yuxel is. I mean, he calls himself and likes to think himself an intellectual, a scholar, yet is unable to grasp that the editor-in-chief of a magazine is not the expert in everything, but rather gets experts to write about the area of expertise and then bundles everything in a newspaper or magazine. Shermer describes the process several times and explains that the skeptic magazine edition including Islam was written by an expert and that he, Shermer, had never read the Quran himself and did not need to. The people interviewing him did not comprehend this. So Yuxel continues his oral diarrhea and further infringes on Shermer's hospitality. In his dishonesty, Yuxel later describes this as a debate and claims he overpowered Shermer. With what? Audacity? And then later, even an Islamic Imam gets impatient when Yuxel tries to talk him to death, endlessly repeating everything. He simply gets up and aborts. The, I mean, one thing, the dishonesty within Islam and the inherent sectarian division becomes so apparent when the Imam in the video says Sharia is not about stoning or hacking off hands and Yuxel himself shows a woman being stoned and some hacked off hands. I am, uh, well, the word Muslim, I think, has Then we uh, see Yuxel who rejects the, the classification Muslim with Shurma suddenly calling himself a Muslim, and calls the Imam's message garbage. In his defiant attitude, he refuses to accept his state of delusion and likens the Imam of the biggest mosque in New York to a zebra fleeing the sight of a lion, which Yuxel seems to see himself as, like I said, deluded. In his at his quest for downloading portions of the 90 miracle to unsuspecting victims, he comes across a very realistic Muslim, a musician who does not really know why he believes what he believes and simply says that a numerical pattern would do nothing for him 
anyway. And this, this segment ends in a sick, sexual, depraved threat which is completely meaningless and primitive. But Yuxil fluctuates between claiming he is not a scholar and claiming he is a scholar. What an evil conniving moron! Yuxil is the typical representative of a Muslim who thinks nothing of tearing apart Islam if it only feeds his own ego and his own personal agenda. So, leaving behind this, this pathetic, pitiful person and analyzing the factual claim for a 19 miracle shows it is simply another patternicity and numerology exercise. If one manages to still argue that the first chapter of the Quran adheres to the number 19, the second already fails flat out. As do all the other sentences, only some assorted ones behave as desired, which is exactly what you would expect from a random text. But how can anyone come up with so many incidents of text matching the number 19? Well, it follows the good old pattern of the only statistics you can trust are the ones you falsified yourself. And here's three examples, suggested by someone called Abdul Halim. Rashid Khalifa made his own personal translation of the Quran, which he continuously updated as the words were required to change their meanings how he wanted them. Now, in his initial version, the last two sentences in chapter 9 were still there. So, when counting the word Al-Rahim, the merciful, he gets 115 counts, which, alas, is not divisible by 19. So, he gets rid of one of them by saying it is wrongly attributed to Muhammad, the messenger. So, he simply subtracts this one and arrives at 114, which is divisible by 19 six times. Miracle accomplished. When he wrote his Quran, the final scripture, he still had the sentences in chapter 9, which include the word Allah. Including this, his count comes to 2698. Later, he deleted the last two sentences and one of them contained the word God or Allah in Arabic and he adjusted his count to 2698. <laughs> well, he couldn't reduce this because 2698 is 19 times 142. 2697 wouldn't match the miracle claim, so he must have found an additional Allah hiding somewhere in the Quran which he had previously overlooked, but miracle accomplished. If a specific word or letter is missing to complete the miracle, why let intellectual honesty get in your way? Why would you want to abandon a perfectly good miracle just because it does not fit? No, you need to be creative, even if it takes placing a black star when you have a hit, even if you need to include counting the ornaments. But miracle accomplished. Does this mean all these claims are based on trickery and lies? Yes, unfortunately. If there is a hidden message in the Quran which is based on the number 19, what does chapter 19, sentence number 19 say? Something about Jesus. Hmm. So where is the hidden message announced? Why in 7430? Of course, it's a hidden message. What probably happened is that someone read 7430 which reads over it are 19 or on it are 19 and did not manage to associate that with the context of hell and some angels managing hell and then started doctoring the words in the Quran. Now, what is important is that Arabic is a Semitic language based on word roots with three consonants. These roots can be manipulated in endless ways and grammar consists of the modification of these roots and inserting letters to adjust the meaning of the words. But as there are still multiple possibilities for the meaning of each word, we need to have the context to arrive at a precise meaning. Because the Quran uses vague and ambiguous words, this deception is easily pulled off. No follower of the 90 miracle ever bothers to explain the definitions or methodology of the counts and why it seems highly dependent on coincidence when or where or how a multiple of 19 is found. Many people have since analyzed the claims and are simply appalled at the level of dishonesty which is at work here. Naturally, because I've not studied ancient or classic Arabic, I need to rely on people who have. Many Muslim apologists make the common mistake of thinking their knowledge of one of the many current Arabic dialects enables them to understand the Quranic Arabic, but I have been assured by Quran teachers this is not the case. I mean, only a few hundred thousand Muslims have studied ancient Arabic, so we are in the zero decimal zero whatever range. 
if we're looking at percentages. Looking at the what I by now call childish 19 miracle claim, we see that it is sometimes counting words, sometimes sequences, sometimes parts of words, or maybe descriptions. Is there any consistency? No. It's not that all characters start with a pattern of 19, all chapters start with a, a pattern of 19, or every 19th chapter has a pattern of X. No. It requires a huge amount of creativity and brain acrobatics to manipulate everything to bring it into the desired sequence. Is any of this capable of making any predictive statement? No. As per usual, we only have the standard taking of current knowledge and projecting it onto an old text. When critics showed up, and believe me they did, and they pointed out error after error, the claims were toned down and the text itself modified to make the claims fit more readily. Instead of abandoning the futile quest, Yuxil still insists there is a point in all this. I mean, the worst nightmare must be the attempt of making some sense of the, the 29 single letter verses or, or sentences or, or signs. They're simply renamed to signatures and the chapters are scrutinized for any pattern which can be made resembling those initials at the beginning of some of the chapters. Does it work? No. Does it make any sense? No. It's just patternicity at work. Just as we have Ivan Panin or, or, or McCormack who found hundreds of codes in the Bible, or we have the trio Doron Witztum, Ilayo Rips, or Yuav Rosenberg, known as WRR, who have found this, the same thing in the Torah, or we have our Yuxels for the Quran, or Michael Drosnan for Moby Dick and War and Peace. Nothing new or original. Now that the 19 miracle has been debunked again and again, what do Muslim apologists do? Do they give up and apologize for their own behavior for a change? You must be kidding. No, they simply move on to the next claim, where this time around, selected words in the Quran have been repeated any number of times to make it look significant to someone with a knowledge which is termed common knowledge in the 21st century. However, in the age of the internet, the miracle claim that, for example, the word day appears 365 times in the Quran becomes a lot less impressive once you discover the selection process necessary to make this work. First off, they is an English word and appears zero times in the Quran. What we need is the Arabic word for day. But here we already run into the main problem. What is the definition of what is to be counted? A critic known as Abdul Rahman points out that if the word is yawm in all its forms, the answer is 475 times. Is a sentence which contains you know, two days, is it counted as one or two? Well, anyway, it suits you to make up the required count. And please consider that the Quran would be validating a Christian calendar because an Allah was, well, apparently not quite omnipotent enough to push the Islamic calendar. Maybe his motion was overturned by the combined vote of the offspring of the Jewish and Christian gods, the sons Ezra and Isa. Will Muslims abandon their Islamic moon-based calendar as a consequence? <laughs> How come some of the counts of day, which in this case serve towards establishing a year, are suddenly turned into entire era or an unlimited and unspecified time span when used in connection with the creation of the earth and the universe in the Quran? What about the sentences where the word day in the Quran is the equivalent of a thousand or even fifty thousand years? Can't a God do better than that? Do I really need to analyze every single instance of the word day to establish the claim is mere wishful thinking? Any, and anyone, anyone really can do this for any of the numerical claims. They are so childish and wrong and just as the case with the inimitability claim will never answer the age old question. Can style verify contents? Here's a list with columns indicating differences in counting the word day in the Quran. Anyone using both brain cells will see that the counting methodology is anything but a method and just tries to squeeze the result in to seem impressive. But for what? Yuxel continuously propagates miracle claim after miracle claim for his beloved Quran, but for what purpose? In the Silverman interview, I'm he clearly says... This, this particular verses shows the Quran is word of God. Well, if these verses don't show that the Quran is the word of God, all others can be rejected as well. So if Yuxel claims that Judgment Day is 2280, why do, what are the calculations for this? 
why just give the ominous, it requires deeper study? Brush off. When I asked him for a definition for one of his claims, he just wrote back, what is the definition of definition? What does stop mean? What does mean mean? What is the weight of an average red herring? Yeah, he's easily upset and thrown off balance when it comes to actually proving anything, quickly changing the topic and applying the typical Muslim or logica where everything the others do wrong automatically verifies Islam and its holy book. Christians who are understandably keen on refuting all these claims have spent considerable efforts on this and have blown it out of the water completely. I, I am unable to follow most of the arguments they make as, unlike their specialists, I don't speak or read or anything ancient Arabic. They do. So, but now what is the point of arguing for miracles all the time if not for the claim of the divine origins of the Quran? Why ask how Muhammad could have known what was correct if Muhammad did not write the Quran? Did the God of the Muslims order the Quran or was it a human? Are the mathematical miracle claims showing the divinity of Muhammad? What is the ulterior purpose of mathematical miracles? Why does he claim he's a Quranist and requires only the Quran and then follows the hated Sunnah when it comes to making some sense of the origins of the Quran for him? Please. I mean, also, would it make people better Muslims if the numerology or mathematical claims were true? Would it benefit Muslims in any way? Or did the Arabs in the 7th century lack the knowledge that a solar year consists of roughly 365 days? No, of course not. Would a God really provide such an inaccurate count in the form of a puzzle? Instead of providing predictive information, we get Nostradamus style nonsense, which requires retrofitting to make any sense. Why not provide accurate definitions instead of puzzles and spare apologists the embarrassing task of having to manipulate the words to make the information fit? In this century, a year consists of 365 decimal 2425 blah, 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 days. So Earth was rotating faster a thousand years ago, so it would have been more. Is this information in the Quran? If I take a price list, any price list, and, and, and take some of the prices and show they are divisible by 19, have I made any significant discovery? Does it mean anything? I mean, if, if, if all numbers have a common factor or follow a distinct pattern, I can say there is a pattern. Does this make any statement in itself about the prices or the descriptions or the origins? Hardly. Just like a page in a telephone directory can be made to show some patterns. The Quran, I mean, it does have some recurring instances of something, like any text. It is coincidence. That's why the word was created. Yes, there are some coincidental structures, but nothing so unusual which would make it wow or anything worth writing home about. In conclusion, we see that the claim for a mathematical miracle is based only on wishful thinking and the result of a deluded, simple and deceived mind. We see the criteria for establishing a mathematical miracle are bogus and arbitrary. There is no evidence for the existence of anything supernatural or the Quran being of divine origins. We are still stuck with good old faith. Because this is so easily demonstrated, the claim for further numerology miracles is simply dishonest and shows the lack of moral integrity and propensity for the willing of deceit of others. As we've heard before, religion poisons everything. Thanks for your patience. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, wait. A new message has just reached me. This book, Recent Discovery, one of the most exciting miracles, studying thousands worth, special discovery, intricate numeric system for existence, accuracy, numerics, and comprehensive code, chapters versus phenomenon, numeric miracle, the workers attempt firm scientific ground, numerical, sound scientific approach, whatever. The foundation and basis of this numeric system is the number seven, the most significant number in the novel Quran. Oh, not again! Ah!